It's a rough Monday. You can see the Dow is down 187 points, down 0.6%. The Nasdaq is down 2.2% as the tech-heavy Nasdaq continues to just sell off. It's 257 points uh, in the red. Stocks are held hostage to the inflation data that we're getting throughout the week, and the big one comes on Wednesday, the June CPI report. Analysts expect prices to increase the most in 40 years, up 8.8% in June from last June. Core CPI, that's expected to rise 5.8% annually, and that would be the third straight month of declines, suggesting inflation might be peaking. Wall Street is also focused on earnings. Here's your calendar. PepsiCo kicks it off for the second quarter earnings season tomorrow, followed by other big names like Delta and, of course, the banks, the big banks, J.P. Morgan Chase. Morgan Stanley, they report on Thursday. You get Wells Fargo, City, and PNC Financial after that. Analysts are predicting a mixed picture from the financials. They expect profits to fall, but trading revenue due to market volatility to partially offset that slump. The possible profit plunge stems from lenders adding to their reserves for expected loan losses, second quarter profits to dip as much as 42 percent, that according to Refinitiv. So with all this in mind, let's go to the floor show and bring in Carnivore Trading's Dutch Masters and Great Hill Capital's Thomas Hayes. Dutch, Tom, welcome. Tom, what are you watching most? Well, I love the setup coming into the inflation print and into earnings, Lauren. If you look at the University of Michigan consumer sentiment at all-time lows at 50, since 1980, three times it's traded below 58. And all of those times, it's been the uh, lows in sentiment and the peak in inflation, which is interesting considering we're coming into the most important inflation number of 2022. Managers are really defensively positioned going into this. Sentiment is at all-time low. Cash levels are, are at all-time high. So if that does come in a little lighter than expected, which we think it can, I think you're going to see a lot of chasing into the market, and that money is going to have to chase as the market jumps from those returns. Why we think this could come in lower than expectation is because uh, you're seeing the Drury ship index, so container freight costs mm -hmm. coming down. You're seeing uh, PC DRAM prices coming down, and you're seeing the commodity basket roll over, as we've seen in grains, and more recently a little bit in energy, yeah. uh, in metals, et cetera. Let me bring Dutch in here, because that is true, Tom, but sometimes it's about what the consumer thinks about all of this and what they think in the future about all of this. New York Fed today said consumer inflation expectations one year from now hit a record high of 6.8%. And we get the University of Michigan, the fresh data on Friday. That was the data last time around that really fueled the Fed's fire in going a stronger 75 basis point hike. So what do you see for Wednesday and consumer prices and the whole idea that inflation might be peaking? I like the setup too, Tom and uh, Lauren. I, I think that, um, you know, the number's going to come in hot. We're, we're looking for 8.8 .8 to 9. Um, 9. We... We, we think the consumer has already slammed on the brakes. We know the housing's already cracked, but some of these numbers aren't going to come through till next time. So what we're looking at here is it's going to be a bad number, but uh, if any of the components of the CPI are showing a significant slowdown, remember, smart money trades on the rate of change. So if the rate of change is slowing, uh, and I think that's something Tom was alluding to, is that you know, if, if things are starting to pull back in certain areas there, and we are seeing it in real time right mm -hmm. now, it's just not going to be in this number. Here's what's going to happen. The average person is going to say, oh, that's a horrible number. They're going to short the market. And in about 30 to 60 minutes after that uh, market opens, this thing's going to turn and run. Mm -hmm. And we think there's going to be a mm -hmm. huge, epic up day on Wednesday and follow through on Thursday and Friday especially in the tech stocks. Okay, okay, but, but what if the consumer um, starts to pull back? Bank of America card data, gas spending up 20% in the past five months, and that is starting to take a toll on travel and leisure. So what if the consumer is helping to push the economy into a severe slowdown, if not recession, Tom? Well, this was the goal of the Fed, Lauren. They wanted to reduce demand, but they don't want to destroy the economy. And one data point that no one's talking about right now is last month, June, quantitative tightening was supposed to deliver $47.5 billion of liquidity reduction, of tightening. You know what they actually delivered? 
7.5 billion. So the Fed in the background is being highly accommodative. And I think if we do see those that rate of change, that Dutch reference, or uh, that number coming a little lighter than expected, which we think, uh, you could start to see some jawboning from the Fed that maybe after the 75 basis points hike in July, which is priced in, maybe they'll start to pause or slow down. And that could bring back confidence. As it relates to inflation expectations, which the Fed looks at is five-year break-evens, those have rolled over in the last couple of months, despite uh, the short-term view of the consumer. And I think that will start to be more more and more normalized as we looked at PPI, the leading indicator did peak in April and uh, and that always leads CPI. So we're pretty sanguine moving forward and we love the fact that people are very pessimistic going into the print. <laughs> okay, uh, so the bar is low. Uh, you know, we, we start to hear from corporate uh, America opening their books on the second quarter. Uh, Dutch, what do you expect the number one question on that call after the release, the call from the CEO, the CFO, what do you expect it to be? Uh, I think they're probably going to be, uh, they want to see the guidance, okay? They're, everyone's going to be checking guidance, to, right to what you're talking about. How is their business doing and, and you know, how robust is it and where are the, where are the weaknesses? I think they're really going to be probing for that. Yeah. All right, Dutch Masters, Tom Hayes, we'll see how bad the guidance really is, if anybody even knows at this point, because we've been talking about the same thing for weeks now. Um, and I guess we get to see finally when we hear from corporate America how it plays out for all of these companies. Thank you.